What's up, quinceañeras of the future? These are your top 10 tips on how to plan an awesome quinceañera. Number 10, get yourself a planner and write in it. It's really cool to be able to go through a newspaper or a magazine or online and say, hey, I like that, hey, I like that. And then when it comes time to actually go and buy what you like or go do what you like, you can't remember because you didn't write it down. The biggest mistake I've seen quinceañeras and parents make in the past is they're not writing anything down. So even if it's just your iPhone or your Android phone, depending on which one of those you bought, go to your notes and type in, hey, I saw this in this magazine on this page and I like this. Maybe we should call this person. Here's their phone number and boom, it'll make things a heck of a lot easier for you and it'll take a lot of stress off of you and your parents in the planning process. Number nine, plan your quinceañera months in advance. You'll be surprised how many times I get phone calls three weeks, two weeks, one week before the person's actual party is going to go down. Do yourself a favor. Right now, if you're a year, nine months, six months away from your party, pick up the phone now. Pick up the phone tomorrow in the morning. Don't wait past tomorrow in the morning and start making appointments to meet people. Go and interview those people. And if you like the services that you're seeing, sign with those people, put your deposits down and lock them in. Again, the last thing you want to do is to be looking for a limo, a photographer, or even a dress a week before your quinceanera because guys it's going to be super hard and you do not want to put yourselves in that position number eight give your family party passes for the hall whenever you rent a hall there's a little secret that you may not hear at every single location if extra people show up it's going to mean extra plates and extra costs that you're going to add to either your or your parents bill so just to make sure that everything is as tight as it can be and you guys are saving as much money as possible Give your family members who are going to attend the party tickets and have somebody at the door count them for you. Trust me, if four more people show up to a party, it could mean an extra $140 depending on how much it is per ticket up, up to 160 again, depending on how expensive those tickets are. Number seven, find a church that's photography friendly. On more than one occasion, I've had weddings, I've had quinceañeras where I'd walk in and the priest right away would stop me and said, guess what, you can't take pictures here, you can't take pictures there, but feel free to stand all the way in the back and get as many photos as you can. Just do yourself a favor so that doesn't happen to you and call call around. You don't have to pick your, your family church, you can pick anyone, you can have it at anyone and find out, hey, what's your policy on photography? If they say, hey, feel free to come in and do whatever you want, that's just going to mean that you're going to have more of a variety of photos at the end of the entire process. Number six, find a hall that has plenty of parking. It happens all the time. You show up at the hall and then you find out that, hey, uh, they only had 10 parking spaces and I invited 200 people. It's one of the last things that you'll remember to check when you go uh, to look at a hall. Everyone's always worried about the dance floor. They're worried about the cost of the meal. Do yourself a favor, take a walk outside and try to find out if whether if they have, they have their own parking lot or if they have available street parking that can hold 100 to 200 cars depending upon how many people you got coming to your party. Number five, try to find locations that are close to each other. And what I mean by that, wherever you're having your ceremony, wherever you're going to take your pictures and wherever you're going to have your party, those should be within 15 minute distances from themselves. A couple of times this year, I've had it where I went to a party or to the ceremony in the morning and then we had to drive an hour away to get to the reception. Now, that's obviously, um, you know, your choice, your parents' choice um, in, in the matter. But at the end of the day, what ended up happening was they lost time that they could have spent on taking photos. They lost time that they could have spent maybe taking a drive some, with the limousine or the party bus, whatever the case may be. And um, it's just, it's a huge time waster. So again, uh, number five, try to find a location or locations that are close to each other. Number four, knock out your dances and important stuff ASAP. Do yourselves a favor. The minute the actual party starts at the reception or whatever hall that you're at, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you do everything. If that's cutting the cake, doing a brindis, doing a um, father and daughter dance, doing the surprise dance, doing the waltz, you're going to want to do that stuff as soon as you can at the party because trust me, it's every there's a there's a lot of people that you're going to have to manage your chamberlanas, your your damas, and um, it can get pretty hectic. So you're going to want to make sure for photography's sake, for the choreography's sake, and for the video's sake, get everything done as soon as the party starts. Number three, don't hire family members to do anything at your party. It's better that you have them sitting down and actually playing the role of family 
than being responsible for half of your quinceanera. Um, if something goes wrong, then that's just going to create an opportunity for there to be drama later on. So do yourself a favor. Let the family come and enjoy the party and just hire the, hire the professionals. Number two, spend the money on what's most important to you. If photography and video is very important for you, that is going to be where you're going to want to spend the most of your money. If you are a huge dancer and you want to get the choreographer that costs a little bit more money but has a quality that's a lot higher, that's where you're going to want to spend that money. If you don't care about either one of those but you've always wanted to take an awesome party bus ride to downtown Chicago or somewhere else in the suburbs, spend your money there. Trust me, at the end of almost every party, when I talk to the either the quinceanera or bride and the groom if it's a wedding, they always end up telling me, I wish I would have spent my money here. Make sure you do a little soul searching and really figure out what's important to you. And when you figure that out, spend the money there because trust me, you're going to remember this for the rest of your life. Last but not least, number one, enjoy your event. You only turn 15 once in a lifetime. Guys, it's a party. At the end of the day, you spent months planning this party. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything has to go exactly the way it is to plan. Because the next thing you know it, those six hours that you're going to have at your event are going to pass by. And the only memories that you're really going to have are what actually went down at that party. So do yourself a favor, slow down, center yourself, and have some fun. Cheesy, but it's the truth. Guys, thank you for watching. Those were the top 10 tips to help you have an awesome quinceanera. My name is Tony with Quinceanera Photography Chicago. Do me a favor, go online right now to Facebook and find me by typing in Quinceanera Photography Chicago. If you want to see any of our work, you'll find it there and on our website at quinceanerephotographychicago.com. Thank you so much. See you next time.